uh, the University of Villanova for taking me here. And thank you very much to Professor Gustafsson for having me here all these days. It's very nice from you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, American politics has been uh, very inspiring for all the world. Uh, and looking to this new political and social reality has been very stimulating for social sciences. Uh, I think, w I mean, one of the best uh, works and one of the seminal works of political science, Democracy in America, was written by a French author that looked to American reality. And well, I'm not saying that it's going to be as interesting if you Americans take a little look to French reality. And uh, maybe a book called uh, Populism in France will not be as interesting as democracy in America. But uh, I think there's a point on taking some time to look at the particularities of French politics nowadays and at the particularities of French ideological cleavages uh, nowadays on French politics. And uh, for looking to that and for studying that, uh, talking about National Front is somehow an excuse. All right, so we're going to see a little bit how these cleavages are nowadays organized in French politics by looking to how uh, National Front has evolved uh, all these last years. So, uh, well, as you may be aware, uh, we have an increasing uh, wave of populism in Europe, all right? Uh, and uh, I gotta say that France has been a pioneer country in this wave of populism. It was the first country that had a very succeeding party, uh, populistic party, and today it's <coughs> the country that has uh, the most, uh, um, the most voted populist party in, in Europe. And um, I think that looking to uh, France reality and how this uh, reality created this kind of political phenomenon can help us not only to understand how is today French politics, but how is today European politics generally. And well, uh, Raymond Aron uh, said that uh, constitutional politics was constitutional before being democratical and that there has always been this tension between uh, the liberal side of liberal democracies and the democratical side of liberal democracies. And he said that uh, there, there will always be a tension between these elements. There will always be a tension between the liberal and the democratic element of liberal democracies. And he said that uh, in France, uh, political liberalism would always be regarded with suspicion. And I think uh, it's somehow true. And I, and I really think that uh, the wave of populism that we are experiencing nowadays in Europe is due to the fact that uh, political liberalism is somehow in, cri in crisis. Okay. <coughs> And I'm going to explain uh, why. But um, I would say that the first thing that we got to do before uh, going to the political ground is to understand why uh, the discourse of the National Front has become acceptable, intellectually acceptable. Because it was not intellectually acceptable in France 30 years ago, and today it is really acceptable. And uh, so I would like to make a little intellectual history about why this discourse has become uh, acceptable. And for doing so, we have to think or we, we have to uh, address a little bit how uh, ideological cleavages are uh, or have been on the last 30 years in France. And I would say that the, the main difference between France and not only US but also Spain and many other countries is that generally a person who is uh, left wing concerning economics is not necessarily left wing oriented considering cultural issues. And also a person that is right wing on economics is not necessarily right wing on cultural or moral issues. And I'm, I'm going to explain myself. 
Uh, normally in Spain, uh, well, maybe it's not the case if you find a libertarian, but it's not very common, right? Uh, in Spain, a person that is really much in favor of a free market policies would be against gay marriage. And if you find a person that is in favor of gay marriage, it would normally be in favor of some kind of social democracy considering economics, all right? And that is definitely not the case in France. And this has not been the case in the last 25, 30 years in France. And I think that's one of the most, uh, uh, most important differences of political life in France. Normally in France, uh, you have that uh, the old voter of the Communist Party, which is absolutely left-wing considering economic issues, he would be absolutely conservative concerning moral issues. He would be somehow against uh, gay marriage, for instance. And on the contrary, you would find that urban voters of center-right parties uh, would be absolutely in favor of uh, left-wing moral issues, such as gay marriage. Um, well, in fact, this is due, uh, um, well, a lot of intellectuals look to May 68 uh, in order to explain this. And if we look a little bit to May 68, we will find that the same generation that made this moral uh, revolution on May 68 was the same generation that later uh, liberalized the economy in France. And it was the same generation that then uh, somehow made France a little bit more capitalistic, All right? Uh, Jean-François Revel, I don't know if you heard about him. Uh, Jean-François Revel is a liberal, he's a French liberal. He's a very sympathetic to United States and he's finally, well, a, a liberal. Jean-François Revel said something like this. He said that real revolution will not come from La Habana. Real revolution will not come from Moscow real revolution will come from San Francisco. And this is, I mean, all this, uh, this author uh, blame the uh, American academia on the 60s and uh, the radicalism of American academia on the 60s for all this wave of cultural uh, left wing uh, sympathies in France. So, uh, well, these combinations between uh, right in economy, left in moral issues, or right in moral issues and left in economy was somehow theorized in, in the US by cultural critic Christopher Lash. Uh, I don't know how famous Christopher Lash is right now uh, on the US, but he's very widely read in France because of that. He's uh, quite famous nowadays, and we read a lot all his books on the decadence of culture and the decadence of the family and so on. Well, uh, Eric Semour, who is a French uh, philosopher and a French journalist that has uh, published a book that is called French Suicide, French Suicide Le Suicide Francais, uh, a couple of years ago, and that has been really a bestseller. It sell like one million copies. Uh, Eric Semour said in this book that uh, the left wing elites and the right wing elites had betrayed the people. Left wing elites have betrayed the people because they have uh, assumed universalism. And right-wing elites have betrayed the people because they have assumed liberalism. And then you find that this is finally the discourse of the National Front. You've got right-wing elites that are liberal concerning economics, 
and you've got left-wing elites that are liberal concerning morals. And that is not the position of the French people from their point of view. I mean, I'm going to explain this a little bit. Uh, as you all may know, right-wing politics in France was mainly, after the Second World War, Gaullist from General de Gaulle. General de Gaulle was a radical protectionist. He was not liberal at all. And then the left wing in France that has a very strong political party that was called Parti Communiste Francais, PCF, that was a party that was not, uh, it was not involved on all these cultural issues such as radical feminism, uh, gay marriage and so on. So for uh, the discourse of the National Front, uh, these traditional left parties and traditional right parties had betrayed the people because they embraced universal, uh, universalism on the left and liberalism on the right. And the National Front is supposed to be the party that is going to take the left thing without universalism and the right wing without liberalism. And I'm going to explain this a little bit more. Well, uh, if we uh, want to finish a little, uh, some more five minutes with uh, this thing about the intellectual, uh, the climate of intellectual acceptation of the Front National, we've got to talk a little bit about how the politically correct, how everything that is called politically correct has become something to blame in France. Uh, there are a lot of philosophers, intellectuals, journalists, sociologists, and writers that had uh, been labeled as reactionaries. There is a very famous book that is called The New Reactionaries. And it talks about the, the cultural life on France since the 90s. And then there you have Michel de Wollebecq, the famous writer, Finkelkrot, uh, Pierre Manon, uh, Pierre André Taguieff, I would say the most famous philosophers, writers, and political scientists in France nowadays. So I would say that uh, this ambience of rejecting the moral consensus of what represent uh, the values of political correctness is now very, uh, very spread out uh, on French public opinion. And of course, this is a moral climate that has, uh, uh, that has uh, beneficiado, como se dice, that has uh, beneficiated, oh yeah, that has beneficiated a lot uh, National Front thesis. Okay. Uh, in that respect, uh, May 68 is blamed for uh, the decadence of France. On their, from the point of view, May 68 is uh, to blame for this thing about the, uh, for the so-called decadence or suicide of friend nation. You've got to keep in mind that friend, na friend nation is a, a nation with a lot of pride with a lot of self-respect, and they always think that their nation should be the first nation <laughs> of the world. And when that does not happen, they start thinking about what has happened with that, okay? We can also say about this that uh, because France has, been, has always been uh, the country of contestation, the country of revolution, uh, the country of enfant terrible, do you understand this world, enfant terrible? Like uh, uh, terrible children, like misbehaved, misbehaved children. Um, when, when the moral acceptable values are left wing, then we can say that intellectual become rebelled about this, uh, about this consensus. But now we should go to the most important, of course, explanation uh, fact about the success of the National Front, and this is a, a strictly political explanation. And of course, uh, we have to think about how, uh, in France, uh, 
on the 80s, there was uh, a huge shock concerning the integration of I immigrants in France. As I said before, uh, French people were really proud about their uh, way of integrating others. They were completely sure about the way in which the Republic worked for integrating differences and making of uh, men from any kind citizens of the French Republic. But then on the 80s, it became absolutely obvious that there were many people that did not want to be integrated and that the Republic would be unable to integrate many, many young migrants or, son or uh, second generation in migrants. And I have to say that that was a complete shock for, uh, for uh, French public opinion. Uh, they always thought that their way of, of treating immigrants and of integrating differences was the one that would be uh, absolutely successful. And it, uh, of course, it would be not the case. It, it has, uh, it did not, uh, it hadn't been the, the case. And that's the moment in which Front National uh, had their first big success on 1983. Uh, the political party uh, presented itself as an anti-immigration party. Okay, it was a trans. Uh, do you say transversal? Oh well, it, it it was a party that did not define itself on other questions. I mean, the big issue was immigration, being against immigration. On the rest of the questions, they, did, they didn't want to say a word in order to take all the voters, all the anti-immigration voters. And, uh, well, as you may imagine, uh, National Front was uh, made as any uh, radical party is made when they enter the game of liberal democracies. They left behind the most ideologized uh, members, they reunify all the families and they take all these families in a course of pragmatic action. And that's what uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen did. Uh, on the time in which he took the party, the party was full of families, full of conflicting families. And he was good politician enough to unite these families and as I told, uh, take a course of political, pragmatical action. Many uh, radical members left the party, but generally I can say that, uh, well, the mainstream of the far right in France uh, assumed that that was the political way to behave. Okay. And I would say that that was the time in which uh, a fascist party, an openly fascist party, stopped being fascist and became something we can call populist or national populist. Uh, as you may know, one of the big things that, I mean, what, is it, what populism is about is about the f uh, believing that political elites are not addressing the real political problems. Uh, the political problems addressed by the elites are problems that are not really affecting the people. And populist party's uh, agenda is to bring to the uh, political scenario the real uh, uh, concerns of the people. That's their language, right? And of course, immigration was a perfect, uh, perfect subject for that absolutely perfect subject for that. Because it was completely true that immigration was a real problem for French people, that uh, on any poll that you did, uh, immigration was the first problem among French people. And immigration was not at all, at all in any political discourse in France. Any uh, political leader addressed the question of immigration during the 80s. And so, in this context, uh, National Front was the party that would bring 
to the political arena the real concerns of the people. So the logic of populism was perfect for them, absolutely perfect for them. Okay. They understood democracy as just bringing uh, the concerns of the people to the political arena, that's it. And because of the elite's uh, refusal to take these concerns to the political arena, they said that they were not real Democrats. So that's how this populism used the discourse of democracy. Okay. Well, of course, we, find, uh, we always find that a good thing about liberal democracies, or at least this is my opinion, a, a good thing about liberal democracies is that elites are somehow moderating the, the, pa the political passions of the people. And that was what these elites were playing, uh, the moderation of the political passions of the people. But blaming them for doing so was uh, a constant on the discourse of the National Front. And now uh, I want to explain which options uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen did have for completing the identity of the National Front, because the identity of the National Front was only about immigration. But what about other issues? Uh, it was obvious that when the party broke into the public opinion, they really needed to uh, present themselves as a catch-all party. They, they needed to define themselves in many other questions and have a much more soft ideology. So uh, there were basically two options. On the one side, they could uh, look to the middle class voter and look to the middle class voter meant just be a party at the right of the right party. I mean, that would be simply be a party anti-immigration, but a party that is liberal in economy, for instance. And that would take the voter of middle classes. But the other option would be just go to the lower classes uh, voters and that would mean to be completely anti-immigration, but then on economy, being somehow left-wing or populist or whatever you would like to call it. And here we have that the National Front of uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen and the National Front of Marine Le Pen is completely different, the one from the other. Jean-Marie Le Pen was a liberal in economy. He liked himself to be called the French Ronald Reagan. And Marine Le Pen is absolutely the opposite. She is uh, somehow against the new world order. She is radically anti-liberal because on her discourse, immigration and capitalism are the two faces of the same coin. And uh, the cultural decline that we live nowadays is a cultural decline caused by globalization, free markets, new world order, and so on. So this uh, National Front of Jean-Marie Le Pen and this National Front of Marine Le Pen are absolutely the opposite on that respect. Uh, of course, Marine Le Pen has been really much more successful than Jean-Marie Le Pen. And the reason why is very simple. It is true that th there were a lot of voters from the middle classes that voted uh, Front National. These voters were generally liberals on economy. And these voters would like simply uh, a center-right party, but a little bit more stronger against the immigration, that's it. That's what uh, uh, mo um, the MSI play in Italy. Uh, the Italian far-right party, MSI, transformed itself into a party called Alianza Nazionale. And this party just entered the mainstream game of politics. And they entered uh, 
coalitions, do you say coalitions? Government coalitions, yeah. They become absolutely acceptable, they become, they became mainstream and they could enter government coalitions with another right-wing parties. That is what Jean-Marie Le Pen tried, but he failed. And on the opposite side, Marine Le Pen thought that the big, uh, I mean, the big, uh, the biggest possibility for the National Front was to take the old Communist Party voters. And that's what she tried to do. And she turned left radically her economic discourse. She put on the same, uh, on the same basket immigration, uh, 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 capitalism, globalization, and so on. And this discourse has been extremely successful nowadays in France. Uh, Marine Le Pen has nowadays maybe 30% uh, of votes, depending on the type of elections, which is really very much on a country in which normally, uh, I mean, the most voted party is 28th, 30, 32% of the voters. Well, there is a social geographer that is called, and he's very famous nowadays in France, he's called Christophe Guilloui. Uh, this social geographer has this thesis that, uh, well, has been very well known in, in, in the country. He says that there are two Frances. One France is urban, uh, one France is um, uh, globalized, uh, is middle upper class, that France has any problem with moral issues. And then there is another France that live on the suburbs of uh, the cities, maybe on the villages. And this France is the one that pay the cost of having immigrants. Well, I mean, uh, this is a mainstream discourse of far-right parties, but this social geographer, uh, Christophe Guilloui, uh, uh, made a book on this uh, that has had a lot of success. And he's, he said something like this, that political elites in France have forgotten about these second friends. Political elites were fighting for, for the votes of the first friends. And the second friends that once voted uh, Communist Party uh, never voted again until the National Front uh, arrived. And so uh, Marine Le Pen addresses her discourse to these peripheric friends. She's saying that she is for the losers of globalization. She called that the losers of globalization. And she's saying that the real cleavage nowadays in politics is not anymore left wing, right wing, is about national and post-national. And center left and center right parties are post-national and she is national. So people should vote rather national or post-national. And this is the interesting thing that all the old communist party voters in France have massively voted national. And that is why the National Front, or at least that's one of the main reasons the National Front had uh, that big success. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So yeah. that some of us here are <laughs> All right. aware of that because you think of the liberal here, it's not a lot of wing. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah when, well, in Europe, when we talk about liberalism, we normally think of, uh, on the mainstream uh, discourse, we think of Margaret Thatcher or, or Ronald Reagan. That's li liberalism. Yeah, that's liberalism for us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, sorry? I have a friend that lives in Misu, whose family is very Catholic and have lived in France for hundreds of years. And they vote National Front. Why do you think that is 
Oh, you saying that he's an immigrant and they... No, no. his family lives there. Uh -huh. But he goes to school in the United States. Oh, all right. And so he told me that his family votes for that party a lot. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it became absolutely mainstream in, in France. Yeah. Even though the medias are still very aggressive towards that party, but I mean, it's the most voted party today. But uh, you find this very uh, interesting phenomenon too, is that uh, National Front is very much voted uh, on first generation immigrants because uh, they feel that uh, they do not want to leave France. They think they live very well in France. And they think that these new immigrants are going to finish with the status they have in France. Because everyone is gonna label immigrants as a whole and they are first generation immigrants and they are completely adapted to French society. Uh, so that's the reason why you find this very shocking thing which is that many first generation Arab immigrants in France vote National Front. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hello, my name is Raphael and I'm French. Uh -huh. so Well, base, yeah, and at the base is like the main focus it had, it had was the immigration. So it wasn't really a government party. And like, don't you think that the people still think that it, besides like we see the, uh, an increasing of the votes for this mm -hmm. party, but don't you think that people are, are still aware that the Front National cannot really govern for in France because like. When, like, as we saw in the presidential election in 2002, yeah. uh, um, like between Jean-Marie Le Pen yeah. and Jacques Chirac, like Jacques Chirac won the election about 80 percent. Like, people knew that yeah. uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen couldn't really govern France because there isn't like a real political program behind the party. So, don't you think that people are still aware of that? Yeah. Well, I, I guess uh, first of all that. Uh, one of the main things that uh, F National Front still have to address is uh, building a real program and not only focusing on immigration. Even though uh, this whole thing about globalization and being against uh, economic liberalism and all this stuff, uh, this is part of talking about other things and not only talking about uh, uh, immigration, let's say. But uh, I would say that the main success of, of course, National Front would never win, or it's very difficult that they win the pr uh, presidency of France because the two most voted candidates go to a second round and then everyone on the second round would vote again uh, National Front. So I think for the moment it's impossible. There's gonna be a, uh, there's gonna be a, a president of National Front, but uh, I think their success has been much more political that, than electoral in the way that uh, the candidate of the center-right party, Sarkozy, he absolutely adopted uh, the discourse of National Front against immigration. Not only Sarkozy, even Manuel Valls, uh, the socialist uh, uh, minister, uh, uh, minister of uh, inter, um, internal affairs. He had a very strong, uh, a very strong uh, discourse, and that's due to the fact that uh, National Front has absolutely occupied uh, public opinion with their own agenda, and that's I think that's a political success of their own. Yeah. Well, well, that I, I wouldn't be sure about this, but you know that uh, there was a huge contestation against um, the law of gay marriage in France. And a very interesting thing is that this contestation was not made by uh, all generations or older generations that, I don't know, they, they don't have these values, that's it. No, 
this contestation was a very young contestation, and it was huge, absolutely huge. It was amazing, really. In Spain, when we had a uh, contestation against gay marriage, that was the contestation you should expect. All Catholic people that go to the streets and made a demonstration, but that's it. New generations are perfectly okay with that. That's not the case in France. It's really, it's really uh, uh, shocking. It's very shocking. And these people, I guess a lot of these people vote National Front, of course. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the most popular uh, party among uh, youngsters in, in France. Yeah. And the most voted among youngsters. Yeah. Two questions. <coughs> One is, what, uh, how many seats does the uh, Front have in, in the Assembly? Well, uh, I think right now we have two, right? Because, uh, but because uh, it's, 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 it's on a, it's vote on different subscription. Right, right, right. And you gotta win your own subscription, which is really difficult for them because, because of that system. And the second question is, you, you referred to May 68. Yeah. My memory is bad. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in May 68? What, what's, what's oh, all oh, oh, right, oh, well, uh, it was simply about uh, this cultural revolution in France. Uh, it was the time, uh, for example, Ronald Engelhardt, this, this uh, political scientist, said that May 68 is the time in which the left became post-materialist. And it left the issues of materialism, that is to say, uh, well, e economic class struggle and all this stuff, and they went into post-material values, which is welfare, recognition, all these things. And well, basically it was a radical revolution, a cultural revolution in the universities. I would say that was, it was not very different from the radicalism in American universities in the 60s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. France has dealt with immigration issues for a long time. Algerian Civil War, I mean, it, can, it goes back decades. Is there a difference now with this current wave of immigrants from the Middle East coming in? Is, 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 has that changed the, the debate? Well, uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess uh, public opinion is better inclined to accept these refugees than it is, than it is to accept uh, general, like normal migrants, right? But uh, the discourse of the National Front respect that issue is, uh, is that uh, they are trying to uh, block us morally by, by calling them refugees. Uh, they are trying to inhibit our response morally against this immigration uh, because they are migrants, <laughs> plainly migrants. I mean, the, one that, the ones that came before, they also run away from many other things, you know. Uh, but I would say that uh, there is a, cl I don't know, I don't know really these days in France, but I would say the climate is not as aggressive as it is with general, like, average immigra immigrants. Yeah. And, and of course, because they run away from the so-called Islamic State, and that, well, I would say that made people sympathetic towards them. Yeah. Still have this strong feeling that we have to deal with it 
by ourselves. So yeah, that's exactly. We feel better in our. Mm. Mm. So sorry, you are from Calais. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really, I